11.30 last night I was down at Access and I realized that today was Tuesday. <laughs> Oh, so. oh no. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Didn't someone write that they heard a fly buzz when they died? Yes. Oh. Well, I didn't die and I didn't hear a fly buzz, but as I lay back for an EKG, I found myself looking up at a frantic bee. Mm. A bee, I swear. How did he get himself in there? The nurse ignored his plight in the fluorescent light. Mm -hmm. And I could not free that poor trapped bee from his spotlit drama in that toxic diorama. And all I was able to do was share this metaphor with you. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it that Emily uh, Dickinson. heard the fly? Emily and, Dickinson. Emily, Emily Dickinson. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah um, I can do that. It's a wonderful poem. It's one of more famous one. I have a suggestion about your poem. Put the word in the second line. Take the word and and put it at the beginning of the third line because you otherwise it screws up your lot your rhyme. What? You said, didn't someone write that they heard a fly buzz when they died? Well, I didn't die. You're right, and that's I right. I didn't hear a fly. Thank you. That's. Mm. I thought the flies buzzed when they, they died. Well, that's, that's what I thought. I've often thought that when they say, you when know, flies they're die, just dying they like buzz. flies, it's like they're on their backs going, zzz, zzz, zzz. Yeah. Is that what? That's what I was thinking. That way. On their feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was kind of trapped there. I was <laughs> looking at the port <laughs> How in the world did he get in there? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's an I can read a standard. He was not an EKG. He was an EKB. <laughs> oh, that's good. Thank you. Okay, yeah, read, read okay let's hear this. Emily, Emily Dickinson. Here's, here's how okay, the Emily I'll, Dickinson poured it out. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm. The eyes around had wrung them dry, and breaths were gathering firm for that last onset when the king be witnessed in the room. I will, by keepsakes, sign away what portion of me be assignable, and then it was there interposed a fly. Perfect. You said great choice. Mm. You made <laughs> yeah. Did you bring something? Quench the malaria rampant in Houston in the 1940s. Mm. Waiting for the popsicle man who brought cool delights to quench the summer heat. Taking my grandmother's doll sewing scissors and my mother's kitchen knives outside to the scissors grinder on the curb in front of the house. Ashburn's ice cream, especially lemon custard, four dips for it on, <laughs> on a sweltering summer night, just a 10 minute walk from our house. <coughs> I don't have to. I didn't get one with a Here we go. Henrietta Glasscock Good, my mother, whose warm personality drew many to our home. The smell of chocolate chip cookies fresh out of the oven welcomed us home from school. Later, we savored her biscuits and a brisket for supper. As a friend, she had no peer. She would do anything to help you out. My father, Daniel Eugene Boone, a petroleum geologist, a man of impeccable integrity, except in the case of stealing ice cream from one of his children's bowls, evoking feigned indignation. He loved to grow chrysanthemums and camellias, his shrill whistle heard two blocks from home summoning us for supper. He loved to sing and play duets with me on the chickering baby grand left to me by his mother, a concert pianist. We sang in the choir and played duets together. His love for gin rummy became our family's favorite pastime. 
Charlie and Alice Glasscock, my maternal grandparents, lived with us. Papa, as we called him, called my mother Babe. He was full of stories and songs. In hay fever time you come, sweet adenoids, under the shade of an old apple tree where the bees stung the hide off of me. He conducted experiments trying to prove that Serto and fruit pectin were cures for arthritis. My grandmother made a lot of my clothes. She tried to teach me to sew, but cut out what I stitched in, ruining any possibility I had of becoming a seamstress. <laughs> That's part one. <laughs> so. Now, we've seen some of this before. Yes, we? but it's yeah. been revised and added right. to. It's very different. Yeah, it's very yeah. different. It's well, there's earlier. Too. Yeah. yeah, and um, now I have been asked to write the logo for our gin rummy tournament which is being held in Maine in, in uh, the end of July and we make t-shirts we always have a t-shirt when we have these things so they knew that I anyway I got a um, text from my niece yesterday saying we thought you were the best person to do the logo so <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be fun <coughs> are you going to put great green gobs of greasy gopher guts on the back going across? Uh, um, i don't think so I mean, we were we're going to put in the language of gin rummy i'm, I'm going to put in the language of gin rummy which my father had very colorful language for and rummy. <laughs> so it was fun. It was, it's really fun. My grandfather loved gin rummy and we're, we lived out from the town and um, he couldn't get in to play with his buddies so he taught my younger brother to play gin rummy. Yeah. David was not in school yet but grandpa taught him to play gin rummy and then my grandmother on the other side was very strictly religious person. And she didn't want it. Well she asked David one have you learned to count? And he said, yes, ace, deuce, trade. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Bad choice. Marianne, the Eastern version of that yummy phrase is great green gobs of... Uh, it makes it historically <laughs> actually accurate from my childhood. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, but you're from Texas. I'm from Greasy. Texas. Maybe you didn't have grimy gopher guts there. <laughs> I'm sure we And the other one was hash smash baby brains. Oh. I never heard of that. Oh. I never, that wasn't a Texas. I never heard of that. Uh. We didn't say, my father said things like that. I just wanted to ask, the, the way that you um, use the names and, and it says who they are, it comes across really well. It I doesn't like stop it, it mm -hmm. or. Mm -hmm. I like it, yeah. You know, you, she, she hasn't had that. I have, yes. Um, we we'll start with a plethora of hummingbirds. A shaft from the westering sun highlights the hummingbird feeder where four birds wheel and whirl, vying for possession. The sunlight, thick as flower and nectar, casts their shadows onto the window screen. Now four hummingbirds and four phantoms swirl and swoop. swoop. More shadows careen across my kitchen counters. But even an even dozen hummingbirds, real and ephemeral, is scarcely enough. Uh, <laughs> and I really did have that, that, that the hummingbirds and then all of these shadows all over the place. Mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah, they're coming. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a great thought. There are never enough hummingbirds. Are there? <laughs> <All right. laughs> Maybe I should change the title to Never Enough Hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. I like the wheel and whirl vying for possession because they. I was oh, yeah, so that, amazed when I first was somewhere that there were a whole bunch of them, and they're just you know they're yeah. just. Have you ever been snapping into the, the when each other? They, it's yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. They <laughs> are. I'm just kind of putting it under the table. I've <laughs> never heard of them hitting a person in the head as they dart around, but <laughs> they hit each other. other. They yeah. hit each other and they yeah. squeak. And you know it, it's a noisy proposition because the sound of their wings and yeah, you really <laughs> captured it. <laughs> now, from the Anti-Dragon Defamation League, 
I'm so miffed. I don't know where to hang my hyphens. Anti-dragon sounds like I'm opposed to dragons when I'm not. Dragon defamation sounds like I want to defame dragons, which I don't. Oh well, to the point. My complaint is with the Universal Association of Dragons with negative, noxious things. Case in point. Dogs are called man's best friend. Trumpet fanfare here, cheering in the background. Must sneezing in the background. But show of hands, who knows someone who was bitten by a dog? There you are. Now, again, show of hands. Who even just knows of someone who was bitten by a dragon? Not so. Point made. Mutter, mutter. <laughs> I, I really get exasperated with people who are always blaming dragons for things. Oh, oh, dragons in, in Chinese are good. Yeah, well. It's the only symbol in the, in the 12 symbols that's not real. Mm. The dog, the rat, yeah. the snake, they're all real, but there's, the dragon is a, is a good year. Come to my house, you'll find dragons all over the place. <laughs> Perils of printing poetry. I called up a poem of incomparable beauty, flowing lines of carefully chosen words, similes, and metaphors, centered on the page in an exquisitely appropriate typeface. Stunning. I selected the number of copies, touched the print button. The printer clicked and whirred and caught. I thought I'd only <coughs> the paper, but after two pages, all was fine. However, however, when I gathered the copies, I found something had been hiding among the sheets. A wasp, a cricket, a large moth, whatever it was, it was unfit to print. <laughs> I had that same experience trying to get this thing. And you'll notice the remainder, whatever, there was one page I had to throw away. It was a mess. <laughs> Those things don't go to a printer very well. <laughs> Just one of the bees that got out of. <laughs> you have a bug in your electronics. What would happen if a bug really walked into your printer? We immensely enjoyed this past weekend's reunion of our friendship that was dormant for 33 years since your OU graduation cast you off on your career trip. An equal treat was engaging with you at the OU alumni weekend events and our visits with Charlotte Long's mother, Bertha's 94th birthday dinner, and to Ryan and Jenny Sloan's baby shower that was truly a winner going to our church service and Bible study together, helped us analyze our values, discuss, and commit them to one another. Your conversations with us, our guests, our friends, regarding issues we've dealt, generated empathy, understanding, encouragement, viewpoints, and feelings we've felt, which led us to possible solutions, resolutions, and reasoned conclusions that will likely bring more fruitful outcomes from our discussions. Thank you. We're talking about how much Athens and OU have changed since you completed your special education in EMR at Educable Middle and Tardive, bachelor's degree in 1971 that many new apartment buildings and dormitories have been done. And since your special ed and MSPR master's degree in 1982, you noted that the Baker's Student Center building and location are new. Thank you for sharing about your two years in private school special education and your 15 years in public school teaching in special education, which requires and grew your devoted dedication to these special students with exceptional disabilities. And for some of them, they had exceptional abilities and personalities. Working with special education students become your most rewarding years of the total of 39 years in your adult working career. And from here on, it still needs some work. We also thank you for sharing about your 
rentals and burdens that we have experienced as well as co-owners of three apartments with our son Brock. And thank you for sharing about your 19-year relationship with your common-law husband Mark, an engineer, an inventor, who introduced you to travels in Europe as he shared his Italian homeland heritage and travels into Latin America in this hemisphere. His passing seven years ago has led to your extended depression that has made it very difficult to make decisions on how to develop new friendships and satisfaction during your retirement. Now, in these past two years, you've been battling breast cancer with chemotherapy and radiation treatments, which have been fatiguing and life-threatening. However, you're reporting positive progress in the shrinkage of the cancer cells which has given you hope for a full recovery. You've even helped us in menial <coughs> and most essential duties of fixing meals, cleanup, home cleaning, house cleaning, pet care, and driving. These are our gratitudes to you, for you, from Mary and Mary Jackman, 6115. Come again soon. Come often. <laughs> she came to our house searching for some answers and for some hope and relief from her grief. Maybe that line will have to go in it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you found your voice. No. Ah. I didn't know you really had one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. Can you tell if it's registering? I mean, can you tell by the, is there a meter that says whether it's, we're loud enough or? No, but whether I can hear it or not. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's yeah. the meter. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That if good. Dad could hear it, it's loud enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> sing with me, Dad. That's how I know. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I have okay. a, I don't want to jump the gun. Editorial. Thank you. I always I, have that uh, I do too. It, I, um, it needs it. <laughs> it hasn't received it. You're inconsistent in your use of numbers. numbers. Yeah. The ones yeah. below 10 should be spelled out, and the ones above like should right, be right right here. numerals. 39, for example. Yeah. yeah. So that's, you've got that's, that's two years that is the number two, and then later on you have three apartments in seven years. And so. Um, in the first place, you're inconsistent in how you're handling them, and in the second place, you're not using the standard form. And you may be shot for that. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. The Conan the Grammarian. Wow! How many? Uh, we didn't Conan get it. The grammarian. Yeah. I didn't want to jump the gun on okay. the comments. You didn't get what? We didn't the next get one. It's yeah. coming. Oh. No, she, I she started the to pass and then. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Thank Ooh, you for that. So I have a question at the bottom of this because yes. I heard on NPR that uh, if you don't have a have form, it's like playing tennis without a net. <laughs> but I have no idea how to start with rhyming or any of that. Uh, anyway, does everybody? Uh, Larry, I just want to say that you, you, in some senses, have overloaded us in this poem. You've got too much information about a lot of things that are not that important to us as readers. That it, They're important to you because you experienced your visit. But there are a few things in here that are really sort of jump out at me. And, and one of them is, of course, this woman's ability to teach students with exceptional disabilities and evidently she had stories about them that were interesting and we don't get to hear about those plus she the other thing that jumped out at me is that she her husband died and, and she's been dealing with breast cancer those are up two other really important issues that they just kind of get thrown into it like a list you know, uh, along with cleaning up the house and driving you around. Beginning. But you might think about what was most important about what was coming through with this. And maybe it was the very simple fact that she was a friend coming for, for hope from your relationship. 
you know, and you, you evidently that visit did something for you and it did something for her too. So, but you don't get to see it quite so deliberately in this format. So I'm hoping we'll see this in a revised form sometime. Well, Simplified. I didn't write it for us. I'm writing it for her. So. But even for I've her, heard, I've even heard for her, you. yeah. <laughs> I, even for her, I think it, it, it still zero in on what's most important. Yes. Yeah, but as a letter, this works okay. You know, I mean, you could send it to her as is. But they often say that poetry is what isn't said as much as what is said. Yeah. Okay. And that balance is something we all struggle with. <laughs> In that case, I have tons of, tons of, tons of poetry. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> and you, you said it. It, it isn't said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it isn't said. <laughs> okay. you know, in, in a letter like that or whatever it is, um, the more little things you, you mention, uh, I think is endearing to them because you really listened and you really see all of her aspects. So that's on, that ex kind of explains why there are so very many things that mm -hmm. you were aware of and appreciative of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some assembly required. <clears throat> I bought a white bathtub chair after Charles was released from the ICU to another hospital floor. He'll need this to shower when he comes home, I thought. After Diana, his daughter, assembled the, assembled the myriad pieces, we put the chair in our bedroom. Diana flew home, my sister flew in, my sister flew home, son Derek made plans to arrive. All the while, the bath chair, a silent sentinel, alternately cheered and mocked me. His discharge to the rehab floor. He will need a non-slip mat to put on the side of the tub. An upbeat future plans thought with a cheerfully banal touch. His readmit to the ICU. He may never ever use this. A tearful but prescient insight. After the graveside service, after the family dispersed, I with ease disassembled the bath chair to take it back to the store. Not so starting life as a widow, far more than some reassembly required. Sort of took the inspiration from the one of the guys at the poetry workshop that said, "Don't write about big things. Take something small and try to." And I think you've answered your own question to the group <laughs> of how to turn oh. this into a poem with form. I mean, it already is formidable, and, and oh. you've started it right where you should, and you ended it right where it ought to end. I think it's in the right form. Oh. And it, and it just it, it um, identifies something that I think happens so often is when you're in a really difficult and, and, and awful situation, you focus on these ways, these little ways that are going to fix it. Mm -hmm. And then the time comes when you're just, there's no fix. And this was never going to do it. And it just... That really came across to me. It really happened. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, very, I can tell it's, that. it's very moving. I don't think it needs anything. Oh, but no, I think it's at all, okay. except repeating, oh. refraining, probably. But how how does a person figure out a form? Like at the workshop, they were <coughs> saying, "Oh, this there's a form called the Sistina that I never heard of that was really baroque and uh, the people that." rhyme things, I mean, I, I, don't, I just don't know how to think of what's the right 
I was at a workshop recently. I'm not sure this workshop. The same, the same one. Uh, at the Hawking uh, Hills Lodge? Oh, no, I'm, I oh, was at one, one uh, after that at um, mm -hmm. Marlboro. I'm not Marlboro, I just call it that. Malabar Farm. Uh -huh. And uh, it was a workshop on prose poetry. And um, it was... Oh, prose poetry. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what was, this is. Yeah. And this is basically what he's talking about. He, the wording, you know, you get poetic phrasing in it. But it does um, it does go on like prose. Mm -hmm. So you, you, so um, one thing I was thinking um, I would say down there at the bottom, I disassembled the bath chair to take it back to the store. Not so easy starting life as a widow. Oh. Instead of saying that I disassembled the chair with ease. Well, I wanted to make a yeah. contrast. Um, I enjoy the contrast like it was. So. Yeah, I think it's good that way. That, that juxtaposition of those two things says so much. I rewrote these last two lines about 50 times. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was uh, good writing those pages. I, I it's like a prose. It I don't think it's good. I, I, I happen to like poetry in a structured form. I, 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 but I don't think you ought to force it into a form. Yeah. Because, I mean, you wrote it as you felt it, and I think that's the right thing to do. And sometimes it feels right to, to put it into a, a form of a, a, a sonnet or a, a, you know, any of the, the classic forms. And I wouldn't mess with it at all. I think it's just right. This is and my fourth one, but I think I'll also have Yeah. Assembly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have another bus point? Uh, well, we short of one. I guess I have the one thing I have one more in my book. Sometimes I can share it. Who didn't get one? Okay. Yeah, I do. I have one more. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We have a, enough? Yeah. Everyone have one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is called Waving at the Bus. The school bus comes, the school bus goes, I wave to it as it arrives, I wave to it as it departs. Aboard this rolling banana sit three of my grandchildren, <coughs> noses pressed against the pane, smiling and waving back to me, at me. I have been waving to this bus on school days for six years now. I bask selfishly in their attention. I am needed, connected, loved. I rue the approaching day when they will no longer ride this bus. No happy faces at the window. No sweet joy flowing out to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just goes past, or do they get on the bus at your house? It, it it's just a curiosity, happen, actually. I, I, it might be confusing to the reader. I, I, the bus passes by the rec center where I go to exercise uh, every morning. Oh, yes. And yeah, I know yeah. my grandchildren are on that oh. bus, and they know I come there, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I always yeah. catch oh. the bus there and oh. wave at them. Oh. Oh. Oh, I've been, okay. And I did it for six years. Unfortunately, mm. for Chloe, yeah. she's now graduating to middle school, so she had her last ride on the bus. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and I'll have two more grandchildren to wave to, so it will go on for another yeah. almost six years. But, oh, my uh, <laughs> but it was fun. I, You're lucky to have so many grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. But I, sometimes people have caught me doing it, and they say, uh, <laughs> the, your grandchildren must really appreciate you waving to them on the bus. And I said, you know, I don't do it for them. I do it for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Are they all sitting together? I mean, I mean that is a way that... Usually nearby. Sometimes they get separated, and, they, and I'll get a text message. We're on the other side. A text message. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got a lovely, the reason I happened, this was kind of sentimental, and, and I don't really like to sit over the sentimental portrait, but the, uh, my granddaughter wrote me a thank you note 
She said, mm. today is, is the last day that you will wave to me on the bus. Aww. 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 And it's the nicest thing anyone has ever done for you. Aww. 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 I'm going to keep that book forever. Wow. And then I thought about it and I said, well, even though it's sentimental and kind of squishy and uh, saccharine, I'm going to write, a, write about it anyway. Oh, but you didn't want to follow <laughs> <laughs> uh, Before you go on, I wanted to comment about a poem that you wrote a while back. Oh. Um, I think you called it Toe Tag? Yes. Toe Tag, yes. yeah. That, uh, yeah. I, I have shared that with a number of people. And I had always planned to be an organ donor, but after your poem, I checked into becoming a body donor, and I, I went ahead and I have done that. So I wanted you to know the outcome of your poem and the impact it had on my life. Well, I'll work with you. It's amazing. Thank you. I think that's a very uh, useful thing to do. They, they need uh, yes. courses to learn. Okay, so um, like Marianne is doing, I'm doing a lot of uh, writing about my family and um, requests for my kids. So this is this is my granddaughter um, Emma, who lives in Athens. Um, Emma at four. <coughs> Emma spills into our house. Can I? Can I? Can I now? Let's do everything. She cries, Quicksilver Tinkerbell style. Little Firebird CEO negotiates in talking torrents, compromises on her terms, tossing promises and pleases. Zoning into special tasks, pirouettes or scissors snipping, trying frothy sounding words, gorgeous, fabulous, enormous. In sparkle shoes and spinning dresses, holding hands with coop for dances, Emma creates a birthday ball, directing the whole event. Jokester Emma yelling boo, hiding and changing the rules, faking sleeping, then awakening, becoming a princess or a ghost. <laughs> Emma interacting with storybooks, revising the characters and the plots. She orders the fox to go home now and assures the fairy she'll dress her up. Collapsing at last in laps and with hugs, Emma suggests her plans about maps. <laughs> a rest on the couch? How about TV? And no forgetting my after nap treats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> I like the energy that is throughout the whole thing. Yeah. It, it sort of slows down at the end as she's getting ready for her nap. Yeah. <laughs> it, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't stay too long. I mean, Emma is so, I'm glad that it came across that way. Emma is just Who is Emma? effervescent. She's my granddaughter. Oh. Yeah. Wouldn't you put the words like gorgeous, fabulous, enormous in the third stanza in italic if those Oh yeah, are yeah. I just obviously I I yeah, that meant that oh. thank you. And boo also. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think I just changed that at the top and the bottom and forgot that I had more. Thank you. Yeah, I'll fix that. It almost seems like it's gonna be rhymed and it's it's not, but I um, I was expecting something maybe down lower where it started to rhyme or where it picked up on a rhyme on the last lines, but it, but it doesn't. Why did you think that? Because Just, I guess because of the way it was, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it seems to, I didn't really so count the meter, but it seems like it has a flow of each. Um, but I think but maybe that works, was unconscious. It works well. Uh, I think it's yeah. just for Emma is so dramatic and energetic. Yes. I mean, she just sweeps in and everything yeah, like yeah, happens. Yeah. Yeah. She you know, spills into the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so very much like I think that. yeah, you captured that. It's right. Just a wonderful. Really <laughs> yeah. 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 It sounds like she spills yeah. into the house and fills it up pretty fast. Oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> she can put more dress up things mm -hmm. out of art. We have a dress up closet upstairs. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how she gets them on and off. But they're all on and off within moments, and it's just, and then we're on something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Have you given this to 
her or later, no, not later, yet. Later. I've just been work been working on it. My mm -hmm. son uh, has seen a couple uh, of different give it to her. Or she'd probably appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, well beyond the four. Yeah. She'll appreciate yeah. it when she's yeah. older. Yeah. 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 Well, Save it for her. Uh -huh. Or give it to Emma at twenty-four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, love I love bunnies, but I have a, a German hatred of vermin. <laughs> <laughs> and there were baby rabbits in my garden, which angered me miraculously. Now I don't look like I'm fast, but I'm fast. <laughs> So I actually ran into the garden and captured the bunny. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. <laughs> and because they were vermin, I was going to break their little necks. Ooh. And one of them nuzzled me, and I fell in love. Yeah. <laughs> and I was so ashamed of myself for being a wimp. I went inside, and my wife looked at my expression on her face. What's wrong? I said, I. I'm going to have to raise these bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> That's, there's a poem in there. That is a yeah. great there poem. There is a poem in there, right but there. I, didn't get the, I didn't get the words there. But, but anyhow. Well, talking about it is your pre-writing. Yes. She said, I said, I'm a, I'm a wimp. She says, you kind of got that wrong, Chuck. The important thing is that you have the heart that made you do this this way. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was what your wife said? Yes. She mm -hmm. she kinda raised me from a martial arts champion into a human being. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Wendy McVicker a judo champion or something like that? I was second in the nation, the Ohio yeah. State yeah, champion. She was a champion. Fourteen times. Yeah. But when Wendy the the teacher of some of the people here is also she's a poet and she, I don't think she's a of young or is it some other martial arts? Or poet? Some, I think she's one, something else. Also a, a karate. Judo, I think. Karate. Okay. karate. No, that's one. Yeah, yeah. she's, I think, the highest ranked <coughs> one in Athens, isn't she, Marianne? You might yes. know. Yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe beyond that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, statewide or nationally. Mm. Well, the important yeah. things is the sweet and soft things of life. Thank you for Emma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for the, um, hummingbirds, and thank you for your bunnies. I really enjoyed your bunny. <laughs> yeah. You already read it. You did. <coughs> yeah, and I guessed over at the copier that there were maybe 13, but now that I realize there are 12 of us. All right, here, take, take one of these. Uh, I had emailed Joe to ask him how he was doing with all this building in Texas. Yeah. Is this okay? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right He's in Austin, right? Yep. Well, no, he's actually in Leanne. Leanne is near Austin. It's right on that edge of Austin. But it's close to Houston. Yeah, they had to find a place to get to the Austin Hospital. They had to make a bunker back for him in the middle yeah. of the house because oh, of the storm warnings. Because yeah. you oh, had to yes. go, it was the only room in the house that was totally yeah. mm. protected. Mm -hmm. But they're having a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are. In their bunker bathroom or in general? In general. <laughs> the, I mean, they love Austin and they've already taken advantage. I've made this list of things they should do. As soon as they got the house in order, they started down that list. I mean, oh. but, yeah, I mean, they joined the, okay. they joined the yeah. uh, Opera Guild. Yeah. Yeah. They're going mm. um, to Kunzburg. Oh, they went to Kunzburg okay. right on Saturday. Haven't gotten a reply on that yet. But no, it's. And, and Adriana has already been offered a job. So, wow. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. Right. So, oh, it's, it's very good. good. 
remember we got that email from Sven saying that they, uh, he and Joy could not come. And I suggested we all meet on their um, deck of their house. And Joy stay inside, and we would be outside, and we'd leave a little window open so she could hear us. I said, maybe the doctor doesn't know the therapeutic quality of poetry. <laughs> but Sven outruled that. <laughs> he said it's a little unwieldy. Um, <clears throat> but it re reminded me of the story. So, Rosemary for Remembrance. Near the telephone on the wall was a rosemary plant. <clears throat> Every time a call came in, she'd pluck a leaf or two or three to nibble on so deliciously. It tasted piney, just about the best thing ever. Where it had been all her life, she wondered, and in time picked up, picked that whole poor plant clean, unable to go anywhere without it. Not to work, not on an airplane, not up the stairs. Like the old tale of the woman who craved an herb, she simply had to have it without knowing why. Only trusting there was a reason behind this tasty madness, and she'd find it someday on nigh. Anyway, why do any of us do the sometimes strange, repetitive things we do? In the end, it didn't take terribly long maybe a couple of months to discover from a gardening friend who decidedly knew rosemary is from the taxes, family taxes, and as such are all natural cancer retardants. For this is what was brewing in this woman's fine breast, a 2.5 centimeter lump plus a 4 point centimeter lymph node the size of a gold Oh, a golf, a golf oh, ball. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that our, our girl Rosemary stopped in its insidious flow. They were re surgically removed, the mystery solved, as she was happy to know. Especially why, when given the chemo drug Taxol, her body answered vehemently, no, 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 apparently already having enough. After that, no more chemo. She was good to go. That was all of 15 years ago. Today she remains cancer-free. Her body, that wonderful temple, was wiser than she knew when it let Rosemary save her, opening her eyes to this miracle so she could be. What? And this is Joy that you're writing. No, actually it was me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Eating that rosemary oh just stopped the cancer dead in its tracks. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, <clears throat> but I forget about it um, because, of course, it was very unclinical in a sense. But it was kind of miraculous how that worked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, these, the chemical things. In, at my doctor's office, there was a little stack of papers that said um, that you can ward off poison ivy by eating cashews. You can. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, <gasps> and I think they said a mm. tablespoon a day would do it. Um, mm. But if you a eight tablespoon of, of what? Handful cashews. Of unroasted cashews once a month will do it. Yeah. My but if you eat more than a quart in a month, <laughs> it will have the opposite effect. You can have an allergic reaction to cashews themselves. Yeah. And you'll gain 85 pricing. <laughs> <laughs> My wonderful oh. wife noticed I was getting poisoning ivy every oh. year. And she told me I needed to eat cashews. I told her it was an old wife's tale and I wasn't going to do it. So she bought the cashews and set them on the table. Mm -hmm. And having no willpower, I ate them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the last time I ever had cashews. So now each year I try to religiously eat the cashews. Now if you eat the roasted cashews, it takes about a whole can to do much. <laughs> the unroasted cashews are the ones you can get by with a little bit. Wow. 
And what's your brother? Who knew? Well, she gave me more information. She said, in Africa, this is done wrong. religiously. Mm -hmm. the, the poison ivy plants in Africa grow to enormous proportions, mm -hmm. and when people get it on their sweaty bodies down there, they really get it. Mm -hmm. And so the cashews are very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It does. It works. Does it? You come to poetry, you learn all sorts of interesting things. I know. Yeah. yeah. And it is amazing to just know that your body can, can take care of it. Yeah. They know it knows what to do, but we block it all the time. You know, your body does know a lot. But, uh, but, yeah. How long ago was... I, I remember, because I remember with... Um, I remember when you had cancer. Yeah. And but I uh, it'll be fifteen years. Yeah. And yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm Have good. you ever done a poem about the uh, about the fishing? I, that's another one I that would I've got. that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> there was a fly fishing mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. retreat for women who had had breast cancer and had very little um, mobility in their, their arm. Um, uh, like, at one point I couldn't even raise my arm, you know, shoulder height. And now when I think about doing yoga, standing on my hands and my feet up in the air, it's amazing. But that was, you know, that fly fishing action, that whip. Um, I was up in Grayling, Michigan, and it was, a nice experience with a lot of other breast cancer survivors. Catch any fish? I was not that lucky. <laughs> 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 but I did have the big boots on, and it, it was standing in the river, and it was the whole experience. It was wow. really fun. Yeah. Ruth, the, the titles from Shakespeare, um, when yeah. Ophelia, Ophelia. Uh, is going crazy and starts to talk about different herbs and what they do. Is that conscious or is it just something that was in your head? And well, whenever you see um, um, the meanings of er, uh, flowers and stuff like that. I'm just trying to bless you. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. They always say rosemary is for remembrance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. It's kind of always associated with it. I mean, I don't doubt it was so even in Shakespeare's I guess time. They just yeah. took that yeah. common knowledge or. Uh, that's the, <coughs> that's I, that's the only one I remember. There's yeah. some, but there are other ones, but that's the one that yeah. everybody knows yeah. for some yeah. reason. The others. I originally titled this, Oh, What Do We Know? <laughs> But then I realized I had already written another poem with that title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought, I'm going to have to do a collection of, oh, what do we know poems? <laughs> There's no copyright that applies if it's yourself, I don't think. Well, That's you know, you think of yourself as such a rational human being most of the time. Um, <clears throat> and then s suddenly you're doing something very uncharacteristic. And mysterious, and it, it was, I mean, the body is amazing. They say about children, babies, little children, you put them in a lot of food in front of them, and they will pick w exactly what their body needs. Um, and that's why they don't eat certain things for some stretches of time. But they'll eat lots of avocados, something like that, you know. Okay. Witness. On a late night walk past manicured lawns and lush spring blossoms, the air fragrant, perfect, as spring evenings can be, we two sisters quietly chatting on this, our last evening of the visit. When two cop cruisers stealthily round the corner, slowly, unhurried, the way you'd picture death arriving, quiet but official and final, knowing all is about to change forever with nothing possible to hold it back, only witness. We wait, they stop. Dark uniforms, things happen we can't see. Then on the driveway, a woman looks away as one cruiser leaves 
and a young boy about 11 in nothing but red shorts is sobbing, comforted by her, his mother we guess. They return to the house, that bastion of privacy that blocks out questions like, who just left? The dad, the brother, we don't know, and we never will. Only that we witnessed a boy with a broken heart, never to forget that beautiful night in May when the bridal wreath was in bloom. We sisters instinctually reached for the comfort of each other's hand, walking all the way home connected wondering what had just happened, but knowing every family has its own pain, no matter their status, the faith they've lost, and the love they still have. That's beautiful. Wonderful. Thanks. Yeah, I like that version better. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear the first version. I wasn't here. But was it changed a lot <clears throat> from suggestions people made? or? Um, I hadn't... Um, yeah, I mean, Joy, Joy had made some comments about uh, certain word use. I had used more slang in the first one. Mm -hmm. But this whole idea of the, you know, in our homes, that privacy that we all have, nobody knows what's happening in our homes, you know. But as soon as you go out and the cops arrive, you know, everybody, <laughs> like, us two sisters were walking down the street and we turned around and we walked back to see what the action was all about. And later we were thinking, this was so stupid of us. There could have been gunshots, <laughs> you know, really. <laughs> but it was such a nice neighborhood. We were thinking that wasn't yeah. possible. <laughs> so I wanted to say a little bit about the privacy of the home um, and the fact that every family has its, its sadness. There's no escaping it. Yeah. Did you leave in about the, when you got back to Athens, the swing? The swing? Someone was on a swing. Oh. You know, that's amazing that you remembered that. Sure. It is for me. <laughs> 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 I hadn't written about that, but I commented that when I returned to Athens, because that happened in, in Shaker Heights in Cleveland, and when I came back home and I took a late evening walk by myself, feeling totally safe, of course, because it's Athens, um, all I saw in the way of action in the neighborhood was one lone person swinging on the swing at East Elementary Playground. So there was quite a difference between the city and the small town. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe you remembered yeah. that. I know, I can't remember, believe I remembered anything. <laughs> there you go. It's a red letter day, right? <laughs> Well, I had this really spooky um, event two nights ago when I woke up in the middle of the night and I was drawn to go to the door that's out from our bedroom. And I looked over and there were these two spots like across, I mean, I could tell it was clear across the street, but it was like this very bright and then, then it would stop and then it would do it again and it's it was so scary I still don't know what it was nobody came whether I had a hallucination or you know Did what but there was no mistaking that these were and I thought okay maybe it was kids over there trying to go frog gigging or I mean I don't know anything that would cause a light to be on like that. The lasers that people are shooting I mean shooting lights up at pilots is 
Yeah, and that's in the news. Been really dangerous. Uh, yeah. But it was pulsating. It there was pulsating. Two, like two eyes. It was, it was like two eyes, and it was like somebody or maybe two people had either a flashlight or something that they could keep. Uh, that could like be a, something that's flat. A car yeah. that maybe was, um, I don't know, was it on Baker Road? Yeah, it was on Baker uh, Road right across the street. I mean, I, I was tempted to go over there, but I, don't know better. Uh, I mean, Don was fast asleep, uh, and I didn't want to wake you up. Decision. <laughs> yes, yeah. he would probably thought was totally crazy. <laughs> He did. I told him about it, and he said he thought it was probably a couple of kids who were. What time was yeah, it? Yeah, it was. It was about 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. when it happened, so it wasn't early. But if someone had pulled over but wanted to warn other cars, but the, you know they weren't parked, but they. Yeah, it could have been linker, or if they put their um, yeah. the flash thing on. Yeah. yeah, it could have been that. It yeah. could have been anything. We looked the next morning to see if somebody had gone in a ditch or something. But was it a steady blinking? It was a steady yeah. blinking. It sounds like a, a car. Yeah, yeah. It but it you just wouldn't was, have seen the car because you know it it woke me up from a deep sleep, <laughs> and it was like. Mm. Well, my theory is <laughs> somebody had car trouble and had stopped. And when they got out to walk to get some help, slamming in the car door is what woke you. Probably. <laughs> Could I, mean, I wasn't there. I, I don't know. It's just, I, well, I tried to write about it, but I couldn't. It just seemed like something I couldn't really make sense of. So. You, you can't rule out aliens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't think of that. So, yes, that's right. It could be aliens. It definitely could be maybe. No, I had a student. No, it. It's true. I had a student who wrote an essay about a night when he was young and he shared a bedroom with his brother and for some reason got up in the middle of the night and he saw, he said, a round orb about the size of a basketball and it went all around their farmyard, very close to the barn and uh, he, his, he got his brother to get up and take a look and it was definitely something otherworldly. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, yeah. Nowadays, Does nowadays that make you feel better or worse? I better put on a helmet. We drums have lights on them. We have another poem coming. Yeah. It But I've had enough experiences kind of otherworldly experiences that, it, especially when we were in the Amazon rainforest, that what is normal to me mm -hmm. has changed. Tell us what happened in the Amazon rainforest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, it would take too long. Write about it. Right, 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 right. It's, yeah. Very, yeah. it's very hard to get that on paper. Uh -huh. But anyway, it was very, you know, would, would it get us to rethink our idea of what is normal? Yeah, yeah, and also of, of what is uh, 